Hello, welcome to our channel. This is a match that was played the other day <clears throat> between Ryan Carlson and John Davis. I was able to uh, host it uh, as John was out of town and Ryan was close to me, so I went ahead and hosted that. I was going to play John afterwards in another game, but we kind of ran short of time and the weather turned uh, really kind of sour. And he wanted to get heading back, so we weren't able to play. I do play Allen in a match tomorrow, uh, our 600 point game for this same Escalation League, my French versus his. Uh, Germans, so that will be fun. Looking forward to that. Uh, this is the first time I've done a narration of a match where I didn't play in it. I'm gonna try to do more of these you know, if I have an opportunity to make them. Uh, so we'll just go along and we'll uh, see how it turns out as we go. Uh, the other thing is, right after this match, uh, the next three days I was sick as a dog. I still have a little bit uh, of lingering sickness, but. Uh, yeah, I meant to uh, get a couple other videos up. I had a couple, actually a couple in production that I was putting together and needed to edit. And boy, everything just, I've just been sick. So, uh, apologize for that as far as not getting a video up in a couple days. Because I was kind of getting, getting cranked out. And I'm going to try to get fired back up. Like I said, I got this match and then Alan tomorrow. And then I'll try to finish up a couple of the other projects that I've been working on. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy. Hey everybody, welcome to our channel. We're going to be doing a battle report today. It's going to be John Davis came all the way in from Hamburg, Iowa to play in our 600 point escalation league against Ryan Carlson. Ryan, if you remember Ryan, we played our last game together. And here's John. Hello. And John, while Ryan is setting up his initial, can you go over your army list for our viewers? Alrighty. I've got a 1942 Operation Lightfoot, which is a North African British unit. Mm -hmm. I have a second lieutenant regular. I have a regular unit of infantry with a uh, NCO submachine gun, a light machine gun, rifles, and another machine gun. Same thing identical with the other regular unit. I have a free forward observer. Then I have two units of Gurkhas, and uh, one has got uh, two submachine guns, a light machine gun, a bunch of rifles. The other one's the same. And the interesting part is the natural character and a Stuart II there with a lot of machine guns on it. Yes. Is these are uh, my regulars are regulars, my Gurkhas are all veterans. They all have a blood, blood curdling charge, which means when they assault, the opponents do not get to fire back. Right. But the Gurkhas on top of that are tough fighters, so they get uh, double the dice. And they also are scary blighters, so the opponents, even if they assault, my Gurkhas, they're in half because nice. I'm so afraid of them. Yes, very powerful unit. And then <clears throat> Ryan today is running Soviets and he is in the process of setting up his defenses because we rolled a scenario and it's point defense and he rolled and he's going to be the defender today. And Ryan's list, I just had it in my hand, but I know uh, it's, right. it's a T-60 tank. He's got a veteran this time. He's got a regular sniper, a regular medium mortar, a regular medium machine gun with a gun shield. He's got his free 12-man infantry squad, and since his selector is uh, Stalingrad 1942, uh, his free squad is Fanatics, and they have, they're have green with the anti-tank grenades. He has a light machine gun squad at regular, nine guys at a light machine gun. He has an inexperienced rifle squad, ten guys. He has another inexperienced rifle squad with eight guys. A five-man airborne squad, veteran. And that should round it off. Ten, ten order dice. So it's going to be uh, quantity over quality, I think, with this battle. Should be interesting. This can be a good battle. I think it will turn yeah. into a uh, slug match. And from yeah. Ryan and, and I's last game, he got a pretty good tutorial on close combat. Be <laughs> the charger, not the chargee, I think is the... And if you've got to be charged... Make sure you're at least in some type of obstacle or building so you at least have a fighting chance. Yeah, and I get two bombardments. And don't have a sissy. Two or one? Oh, you get I the get, prep bombardment. I get the prep bombardment. Yes. And then I get one with my four server. Yeah, but you never know where that's going to go. You go directly on the object? Could. It could go up back on his head. I've had them before where they've gone five turns of being delayed and then you're like saying, I don't want it to come in anymore. <laughs> Cancel the bombardment. You played DC online too. Yeah. Oh great! All I gotta do is on, on my preparatory bombardment. All I gotta roll is two or better. 
And you get it, yeah. And I get it. <laughs> well, the British special rule also allows him to roll two dice and keep the best of the two. Yeah. I yeah. don't like that. So he'll get more sixes than normal. All right. But I it's think, not poor. I think that'll do it. The initial ones, maybe. Oh, this way. All right, so you're leaving your tank, your free squad, your airborne, and uh, your regular squad off, which is good because you don't have to come in. Well, what did you do with your lieutenant? He's right there. <laughs> I don't trust him. You don't trust him? I was actually going to leave him off. I was like, well, he's going to get out there sometime. Yeah, there you go. You're leaving all these all off? Yeah, he's going to. And here's the tokens, John. And I don't know if we showed them. Where are the, uh, yeah, where are the objectives? One, one, one there, there, one there, one there, and of course. There. Now, they're in the woods and soft cover. Correct. But this is also, is this blocking? It's soft cover, but it doesn't block. It's just it does edge. not, that's what I wanted to find yep. out. This and this doesn't cover. block if you can see two inches into it. Yeah, he's sitting around the edge. And it's so. rough ground, so the woods will, no running. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's... Wheat fields are minus one cover, but they don't obstruct any line of sight, and they don't uh, slow you down at all. Obviously, stone walls are hard cover. You've got some road way here, but there's yeah. a fountain in the way. Kind of, you have to maneuver around. Yep. Yeah. And these guys are they? They're in back of the house. They're in the house. They're in the back. All these guys are in the back. These guys are in the on top. Um, okay. All right. So first thing we got to do is a prep bombardment. So John's going to roll that up, and he gets to roll two dice since he's British. And uh, he gets uh, a couple pins on, he's got a, Ryan's got a medium machine gun team over on the, in the woods there, and he's got a, uh, a sniper actually takes a hit. He rolls a six on the sniper, kills the guy, takes two pins, and Ryan fails his check, so the sniper's gone right away. Uh, takes two pins on that squad, two pins on the lieutenant. And he rolls a six on this squad, so it kills the guy, puts two pins, but then Ryan gets to roll because they're green. And he actually gets a five, and they upgrade to regular. So, did him a little bit of a favor. And we end up uh, putting a little token on there because a lot of these guys look the same. Ryan's also running, well, since I didn't really get with Alan, Alan's got the Soviets down in his place. He's, his free and experienced squad is being, the part is being played today by some German grenadiers and uh, he's got the T-60 tank we don't have that so it's it's a Panzer II and then his airborne today are some uh, veteran uh, Germans as well so and then we start going into the turns drawing some mortar dice and uh, John brings his tank on very aggressively and he's gonna be spraying some machine guns because you can advance uh, on the roadway and turn. So he, he's going to spray some machine guns at the medium machine gun team, but uh, they are hidden, so he needs uh, super sixes to score any hits, and he, he doesn't get any. And Ryan can't bring anything on uh, this any, from the board edge because everything else is in reserve. And John has it like half of his stuff in first wave. And this is a his uh, artillery observer runs in and he's in the like the bottom floor of that house there and then John's gonna end up bringing his running his uh, regular uh, regular squad and his lieutenant into that destroyed little house there and uh, Ryan's just basically trying to rally <clears throat> he's able to rally one of his units and clear the pins off and he rallied the pins off his medium machine gun uh, his squad that became regular failed and just went down. And his uh, uh, lieutenant, I believe, failed. But the squad next to him passed. That may be the lieutenant right there. But that's really going to be the gist of turn one. John still has his uh, two Gurkha squads in reserve. And he's got a regular squad in reserve as well. So, Ryan, his last order dice, he is able to clear the pins off his lieutenant. So, pretty pretty good. The only thing that really failed was this <coughs> squad that took the hit. Oh, here comes his. This is still first wave, I guess. And that's his. Those are a regular squad. His Gurkhas are in reserve. And that's going to end turn one.
So, you know, all Ryan needs to do is, is protect from protect those points. Uh, tanks can't capture them. Ryan has a heavy mortar up there. Uh, John kind of just drives over that well and uh, is going to be shooting the the heavy mortar. It's not. Uh, it's not. He doesn't have any cover in the way or anything there. And uh, he's going to let them have it. He does. Ryan does go down with the mortar, but is unable to save them. And they take a couple hits. And Ryan rolls poorly on the morale check because uh, they took off uh, two guys. And they go down. So the mortar team's gone, but the tank is very much committed. So Ryan gets the next order dice. He's trying to bring his tank in. And he is successful. Now his tank has a light auto cannon and a coax medium machine gun. So he can advance 18 inches on the road. And he's going to basically drive right along next to it. Now the one thing about the Stuart, it's a pretty sweet tank, I think. Eight armor, light and a tank gun, coax and medium machine gun, and two hole mount machine guns. Uh, but it is also thin sides. So it does have six armor on the sides. So that is... Uh, a bad thing because the two auto cannons come in and they basically fire point blank. He hits with both, so he needs a four to glance and a five to penetrate, and he gets one of each. He gets a glance and a penetration. So on the on the roll, he gets a crew stunned on the glance, and then he gets an, an immobilized on the full uh, penetration one. So he doesn't knock the tank completely out, but he's able to put quite a few pins on it. And it is now mobilized. But he's also sitting at point blank range, so whoever gets the next order dice could uh, could definitely kill the other person. And that's where just put a little bit of smoke on the back to, to symbolize that it's immobilized. So that is a there those guys are like we're driving right next to each other. That road you know makes it uh, pretty interesting. So now Ryan, you know, he's just kind of be doesn't have a whole lot of shot options. He's checking his medium machine gun. And uh, he throws some dice. Now, John went down with that regular squad in there, so he needs super sixes. He would have needed sixes if uh, he wouldn't have gone down. <clears throat> well, maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't go down. He uh, took a pin from Ryan, but he didn't kill anybody. So he's going to fire back. He does have a light machine gun in there, uh, but he turns out he's out of range. <laughs> so Ryan has to roll to bring his stuff in, minus one. And <clears throat> in the game we played, he had a <clears throat> very difficult time with that. So he's doing really well so far, two for two. And this is the free inexperienced squad. They do have anti-tank grenades. <coughs> so he commits them to the far end. He's, he is concerned about that tank. Probably doesn't need to be as concerned at this point since it's immobilized. Because you don't want that thing driving close to you with the three machine guns. But he is uh, bent to nullify it. And he's also a little bit leery about the artillery observer calling in strikes all over the place. <laughs> down here if all of this stuff is bunched up and he also doesn't know where the Gurkhas are going to come in so it's a good good play uh, it's just when you do commit your stuff from reserve they're pretty much stuck there <coughs> excuse me so this is his now boosted up they became regular squad and they go uh, I'm basically up on top of that building there there's a ladder well kind of on the side so they go up there with a run order, carrying one one pin with them. Now well, you can see John had moved a. I think we lost a little bit of video there. He he's got a little he's got a regular squad that he ran up there on the side of this destroyed building. <clears throat> and I'm trying not to uh, give any tips or advice or what I would do type of stuff during this while I'm while I'm watching I am assisting with you know a few, any rules questions and <coughs> Ryan is still pretty new and he's new to Soviets I'm trying to keep the unsolicited advice uh, to myself because I don't want to favor anybody or change their game uh, 
John is a experienced war gamer. He's played many, many other game systems, his type historicals, uh, but he's he's relatively newer to bolt action. So sometimes, as as you all know, if you've played multiple game systems, sometimes rules blend together. So there's sometimes there's a question. <coughs> Not that I'm a rules expert, but <laughs> usually between the three of us, when in doubt, we look it up. But usually we got it pretty well, pretty well covered. So and I am interested as I'm watching to see what Ryan's going to do. This squad here by this destroyed house, there's a little bit of rock cropping uh, in the forest there. There's some room to come in though. If he comes in hard on the left, you could probably have a shot without any cover, but he's but he would be open for counter fire. So I'm just watching to see how he's going to deal with them. Because here comes some Gurkhas and they're running in from reserve. And they're right off the edge of the screen, I think. So John's committing his reserves. And he's got two squads of Gurkhas there. <coughs> God, sorry, this coughing is going to be very annoying. I'll try to keep that to a minimum. So that's... Getting close to the end of turn two. We do have a turn dice, but you can see it's on the far left there. Um, and so yeah, we start turn three, and he fires his two auto cannons, needing twos. He hits with one, misses with the other. Uh, he doesn't even penetrate it. So uh oh, uh, John decides to rally his tank because it has four pins on it, maybe five pins. He actually passes his rally check. Uh, then he rolls poorly on how many pins he clears. And he clears two or three. So it's kind of uh, good for Ryan that he brought his uh, inexperienced squad in there now because it does give him an option to assault the tank and now that John had activated and like it, John has said it's like well you know I've got five pins on me so even if I don't activate and he charges me I'll be, hit, I'll be shooting at minus five so yeah. he's just trying to clear those pins off while he can here's a veteran squad it's a five-man squad they do have tough fighters, but they just have rifles, and so he's needing, I think, sevens with the hard cover and the movement and long range. But uh, he is on the board, so he's got uh, he's got a counter to John's uh, push up the flank. Started, uh, it's it's not a lot of a counter, but if played right, you know, if he gets the charge with the tough fighter, he could really tie those things up and delay them and maybe you know, kill a unit or so, weaken them up. Because those are both regular squads in those buildings. One is a light machine gun squad on, on the on that big building, and the other one is a uh, just a rifle squad. So here he does assault that tank. Uh, one thing about Ryan, he's really enjoying the assaulting phase. That's one of the reasons why he purchased Japanese, and we still have yet to get them assembled. But I think he will be a very very tough opponent. The more he plays. <laughs> He's picking up the game really fast. Uh, he, he played. He, I thought he played this game really well, uh, from start to finish, for being about his fifth game ever. And uh, can't say there was any glaring errors that he made. Uh, a little bit of post-game talk we talked about. Uh, he probably put a little too much. Uh, he's able to kill that tank uh, with his assault because the tank hadn't moved yet. So he had quite a few hits and was able to penetrate that eight armor. And, uh, yeah, like I was saying, uh, he, he probably put a little too much value in the power of our artillery strike. He was a little worried about that. And uh, he's a little worried about engaging the Gurkhas. I mean, they are really awesome, but there are ways to, you know, mitigate their awesomeness, basically uh, deny them charges and stuff. But, no, he played, played a good game. And so did John. John had a plan of attack, and he's carrying it out. He puts his artillery strike there. He wants to put some suppression on where the the infantry squad. And there's a lieutenant <coughs> back there, and there's also a medium machine gun kind of over to the side of that building. So here, John. He's uh, going to fire at this squad here. And actually what he does is 
<clears throat> since he'd be tracking across that uh, stone wall from fine from there he decides to give them an advance order and uh, he moves up to there so he takes one from the movement but then negates the hard cover so it's just a movement penalty soft cover and range firing at those veterans he's got a light machine gun in there and three rifles or actually two rifles and a sub, couple submachine guns but the submachine guns are out of range but he's able to put a pin on the veteran squad but doesn't kill anybody that's the one nice thing about veterans dying on fives is very nice but John's got a five man squad of regulars with a light machine gun two submachine guns so Ryan has some tough fighters but he's out of charge range You know, they're just he's discussing some of his possible options. He is concerned about that artillery. So he's thinking about uh, running down the stairs there and going out back. And uh, what he ends up doing is actually uh, puts his order dice on his mini machine gun team and he runs them away. <clears throat> so they just run over there. Here he's trying to fire with this regular squad <coughs> Excuse me, up on top of there at that regular squad. And that's actually a really good shot. Uh, it would have been range and hard cover, but he's got a lot of rifles and he fails his check, needing an 8. So here comes some Gurkhas. They're just running. And then... Uh, his lieutenant actually runs over away to the right to try to get away from the artillery and then I believe he just ran, uh, Ryan just fires with these guys up here and they're shooting at that regular squad in that building needing sixes and he's able to hit a pin and I think he picks a guy off yep picks a guy off so he does get a hit so not bad uh, here, uh, John then activates that squad, and uh, they pass, and they run out to there. And then his lieutenant runs over there too. So he's definitely going up the flank, huh? Pretty uh, light and loose with some of the train and movement rules here. It's just kind of a friendly game, yeah, so it's not like a tournament, and everyone's just everyone's. Uh, they're the players, and as long as they agree on whatever they want to do, they can do whatever they want to do. <coughs> play the woods they're playing the woods as soft cover only and turn four already so one thing about these 600 point games uh, is that uh, boy they sure do go fast so we're gonna resolve their artillery strike and John does roll it to come in and they roll to five so it's an 11 inch radius and he's uh, putting pins on these things and he is, uh, he doesn't roll any sixes, but he gets two pins on everything. And, that, and the lieutenant was in range as well. <coughs> oh, correction, he got one pin on that squad there, because they only had one before. So, uh, Ryan does a rally order, and he rallies them. I kind of thought he might shoot with the minus one, but he just decided to rally them. And he wants them to be, he wants them to be fully functional when the Gurkhas get close so John advances this squad up there uh, so he takes the, the initiative on that <clears throat> and they advance up or actually yeah and they're shooting and he's got quite a bit of shots puts another pin on but and he picks off two guys not enough for a 50% check but it definitely weakened that squad up so that was a kind of a painful move came painful for Ryan because you know there's not so big so here comes these guys since it's coming down the road that tank can do an advance and he doesn't have a lot of targets so he's just gonna fire his auto cannon at that sniper <clears throat> needs a seven and he boy he almost got it he got a six followed by a five here comes some Gurkhas and uh, John's got them equipped with quite a few submachine guns and stuff, but I think a lot of his submachine guns are out of range. Uh, 
They may, they may have been, I think, no, they think they were right at 12, because John had commented that he'll be able to charge them. Uh, so here comes the shots, uh, but it does count as being in a building there. So uh, rolls pretty poorly, actually, all things considered. So that was good for Ryan, but he did put a pin on that unit. Uh, here Ryan is going to be starting to run these uh, inexperienced guys who had assaulted the tank and consolidated past it. And they're going to, since everything that John has is basically down here, he's sending them this way. I think he wants to go after that artillery observer uh, who's just kind of sitting in the window of that house. Uh, I'm not sure what Ryan was thinking there with them. But uh, he may have, see, being new, uh, a newer player, I think Ryan might have been thinking that the artillery observer, similar to a, a United States air observer, could fire a second strike. I think he wanted to head that way to try to start nullifying that guy and keeping him from doing that. Here comes this squad. They're just running. So that is an inexperienced squad that he had brought in the turn before. I was kind of surprised when he did that. I thought he would bring him in more on the far left here to support this push of John's. Uh, but that was before the artillery came down. And I think uh, Ryan was, again, a little concerned about how that artillery worked. And then, uh, now that it's happened in future games, we, me and him have talked a little bit, that he kind of understands that it's not, it's not the end of the world. It's not, uh, I mean, it could be bad, but... It's really not uh, end all be all. So here he decides to try to do a, a charge, and he passes. So John had already activated; he can't fire. So Ryan comes in and gets to go first. So he's got six attacks, and he's able to kill off three. And he rolled two sixes, but doesn't roll any. Oh, he did roll it. He did roll an exceptional. And so he picked off of one of the submachine guns. <clears throat> so John's got two back. One of them is a submachine gun, so three attacks. And he picks off one, but then so then Ryan wins. <coughs> Ryan gets consolidated. He rolls like a four or five. So he is going to hop back basically kind of where he was so that other Gurkha squad doesn't just shoot him or anything. And John doesn't even mess around. He doesn't even try to advance and get a shot. He just runs. So, he's going to kill that squad next turn, more likely than not. But that was a good play by, by Ryan, I thought. Uh, I mean, traded a squad for a squad, for sure. And then also forced one of the Gurkha units to have to come deal with him. So, after a bit of <coughs> deliberation, uh, he activates that squad up on top of the second floor there. And, uh, well, he's got to pass an order check. And... He does have a lieutenant on the other side there. He, he's contemplating what to do with the machine gun. I think he did fire the machine gun, but rolled poorly. And, uh... I don't know what happened there. Oh, he tried to activate those guys. And they failed their activation check. They're going to fire those light machine guns at the Gurkhas. But they failed. Or no, here it is. He's finishing up. Okay, so he's shooting at the Gurkhas there. Uh, and, uh... I guess uh, Ryan had the last couple order dice of the turn. And he's able to put a pin on the one Gurkha unit. And there sometimes, no, so now we're starting the next turn. <coughs> there comes the tank. And the tank is going to be firing. And he's trying to decide whether to shoot medium machine guns or shoot auto cannon. If he does shoot auto cannon, if he's going to shoot his armor piercing or not. So I think he fires armor piercing two shots and misses. He's really trying to get pins on these Kirkus. So here he's, he wants to shoot his machine gun, but <clears throat> remind him that he can't move and fire. So he's going to shoot long range, hard cover because that stone wall. And uh, he doesn't get any. He needs sixes and he didn't get any. And it's like, oh, it's not good because he needs pins on. So he's going to try to activate these guys and they pass. So he's got about eight rifles there. And he's going to be shooting at the Gurkhas. He's able to score some hits. And he actually does kill two guys. So that was nice. Got another pin on. So he could possibly uh, get them to fail. 
Now John's going to get it to an order dice here. And uh, he's going to activate them. Then he changes his mind since there's no real rush. He uses other Gurkhas instead. And he's going to assault that squad. And that's pretty much a foregone conclusion. But we just throw the dice and uh, destroy them. And they consolidate. And so now John's thinking about doing those guys, but he brings the lieutenant up there first to make sure they activate their on their order check. And he pulls the next dice, and here comes the Gurkhas. And uh, Ryan had already fired with them, so they're not going to be able to do any reactionary fire. He wanted to get that squad on the roof to fire them too, but that's not how the order dice came out. So here comes the Gurkhas. Now, at least Ryan gets to go Simo. <coughs> he has regulars. He has about... I think nine nine guys and you have it round up. So he does get five attacks simultaneously. And he actually rolls really well and he gets three. And John rolls poorly and gets uh, three as well. So it's actually a draw. Uh, Ryan actually has a chance. So he's got uh, he's only got a few attacks after that and he doesn't get any fives. John's able to get at least one and win. So there's two Gurkhas remaining. And they took took the building, and they have one of the objectives. But, boy, that was close. Uh, when he got that first good roll going Simo, that wasn't so bad, considering uh, he was outclassed. These guys advance up, and they are trying to, basically, if he's, he's hoping to get a, kill one guy, and he forced a 50% check, but needing sixes to, now that they're inside that building there, can be a little bit tough. But it's only turn five. Uh, he does pass there, and he, he just shoots across from building to building. Uh, puts a pin on, but it's not able to kill anybody. They've kind of got the guys on the top of there for simplicity. Here comes his other regular squad. <clears throat> and they're going to advance and put some shots out on that squad in the building. And puts a pin on and he actually gets a six and kills a guy. Or whatever he needed a four. Yeah, no, Ryan's guys are actually on the roof. So they're just forced to kill him. John's guys are in the building. They're just, it's easier to put them there. These guys come running around the hedgerow there. So John has one token with two Gurkhas on it. And there's another token <clears throat> on the other side of that little factory building. And uh, it's kind of right on the other side of the, like in the woods there. So he's running that way. He's hoping for uh, additional turns. Or no, he want, those guys had already gone. They had assaulted. So he couldn't, couldn't activate them again. And Ryan's just got his lieutenant over on the other side. And we're going to be going to turn six. So John's <clears throat> kind of hoping for a turn seven in that he can get his Gurkhas up to the other token. But, uh, you know, you never know. He's just going to push on. They just run. And then we got, you know, mainly we got Ryan's got a few options uh, as far as what he can shoot at. So Ryan does fire a couple <clears throat> armor-piercing auto cannon shots at those two Gurkhas. It was tough to hit them, being a small team now, but and in hard cover. But he's just trying to get a kill. Here he's got a squad. He's gonna advance them down to like it's kind of hard to see him from here. But he's only going to be able to get a couple shots where you can see the Gurkhas. He's hoping for a pin. Uh, what he kind of did, though, was set himself up for a charge, which I don't think John would be able to get to the token uh, without being able to charge somebody and consolidate pass. His lieutenant just kind of peeks around the corner and fires a couple shots. Does get a pin on the Gurkhas.
Nun's got a couple shots with his lieutenant. Or his Kirkus. And the main machine gun team opens up on these guys. Is able to score a hit and pick up a guy. It's kind of nice with the season three rules, getting the six shots it makes a lot more sense. I'm interested to see if anyone's seen that interview with Alessio. He talks about making machine guns more powerful. Hopefully, they'll either give them that higher rate of fire, or uh, I know a lot of people are interested in maybe a higher pin mechanic. We'll add a different mechanic. I guess they do have it like HE, D2, and stuff, but. We'll see. They do. They do need a little bit of an upgrade because they are cool, very iconic, something to have. So now they're just, you know, they're basically just throwing some dice. Uh, Ryan does have one play left here where he's he's got that squad with the two pins on top of the building there. They can come down the stairs and get in front of those Gurkhas, or they can move to the other side of the roof and fire down on them <clears throat> and he goes that way to he does pass and he goes that way he's going to just try to protect the token uh, on a turn seven uh, which uh, I kind of missed that that was actually that's smart because even if John had killed those guys and over ran then he could have counter charged with those guys but so that's going to end turn six and they roll and it does not go to a turn seven so the game is a draw it was a enjoyable match uh, for our little slow grow escalation uh, both players did really well uh, this one's kind of tough to be the attacker so when Ryan won the roll with, with at this point level in, in particular when uh, when Ryan won the role to be the defender, that helped him out quite a bit. But John still almost got there. You know, one more turn, he would have got there. But thanks for watching.